yeah, I'll just go through some slides here. And then if I have time, I'll show you some terminal stuff. Um, let me talk about Arbol first, kind of what we're doing and, and why we're uh, doing this work with, with weather data. Yeah, so Arbol is, um, we do these parametric agreements for various different kinds of businesses. So think like, you know, in agriculture, which is a very classic use case for this, think a beet farmer wants to get paid if they're, uh, if it didn't rain enough in their, in their farm area during uh, the growing season. Um, and, and this is a, th this is a very small but existent uh, space in the US. Uh, and, and we've actually captured a lot of that business so far in the, in, in the US agriculture. Um, but we're also expanding out into a ton of other very interesting markets, uh, shipping and logistics. So, you know, if, a, if, a, if there's a storm, um, a shipping company might wanna get paid if that happens. Uh, you have construction, you have energy for, uh, for you know, wind and solar and even, um, uh, electrical utilities, um, vacation rentals. Anyway, the list goes on, uh, but the point is that we're doing these weather agreements and it's a very, very, very underserved space, even in the US and, and very much globally. Um, here, let me flip slides. Uh, yeah, so this kind of talks about uh, the existing kind of problems with the industry. Um, it's just very old school, right? Lack of access. Millions of farms and businesses are excluded because current minimum policy sizes are too high. It's quite expensive. Um, pricing is opaque, high transaction fees. And it's all summed up here, really. Our business is crafting and distributing parametric weather contracts uh, that pay out based on global weather data sets. Um, it's important to know that this is similar to insurance, but it's not quite insurance. You can think of it as uh, being like insurance, except, you know, it's a little more, um, it's based on data. There's not, you know, on the ground assessment. That's the main difference. Okay, so if we're gonna be doing these uh, agreements that pay out based on weather data, um, we need to get the good weather data. So there are a number of very good projects happening uh, and that, that have been happening uh, for the past decade or so run by scientists and academics and governments. Um, these are just some screenshots of a few of the different projects. Uh, here we have uh, NOAA on the left. Uh, second from the left is CHIRPS, which is uh, uh, climate hazards, infrared interpre uh, interpolated uh, precipitation stations. Yeah, it's a funny acronym, but that data set is generated by interpolating weather station data with infrared satellite readings. Uh, and then they, they use a whole bunch of very advanced methods that are great. And then they post it to FTP. This is a screenshot of where you can get this right along with the good old dot DS underscore store. Uh, you know, uh, the point of this slide is sort of to show that some of these like hosting infrastructures are not great and getting to IPFS as kind of the answer to that. But I don't want to in any way uh, you know, um, really uh, depreciate the quality of these projects. They're great. And like, we, we email with these guys all the time and, and they're, you know, but they don't, they aren't great at hosting. So, you know, here's uh, era five. Uh, this is a great project. They, they actually have a lot of stuff here, but their API is like super slow. Um, this is prism. Uh, another, uh, another interpolated data set, which you can get over, uh, over FTP as well. So these are some of the problems with the current uh, weather data that's out there. And by the way, this apply, you know, these, these issues are kind of focused toward this parametric use case, but they really apply to everyone. I mean, data scientists who are crafting government policy, um, scientists who are studying climate change. I mean, these, these weather data sets uh, are, are global and they are a global resource and they, in my view, like the just importance of them is not really matched by the, you know, attention that is paid to uh, how they're made available. So I'll just go through this list here, but with some of the problems, um, the formats are idiosyncratic. So, you know, all four of these different projects and also uh, the other ones that exist have different formats. You have to kind of learn what they're doing um, through their documentation. <clears throat> Endpoints can be slower on available and that makes it hard for us 
to uh, to build production systems, you know, we can't really hook directly into these sites because often they're just down. Um, so old data is revised without a log of changes. Yes. So uh, you know, one thing with these interpolated data sets is that you get your satellite data right away, you know, uh, and then station data kind of trickles in over time. And what these folks do is they just edit the old data. So, you know, I have a post from a month ago, I'll just update it as the new station comes in. And Prism actually uh, does six revisions once per month uh, for every data point. So that just become, and it's not tracked. So that just becomes a huge problem for us and really anyone who's trying to get, you know, exact numbers there. Um, data is not securely hosted. So, I mean, you know, these guys, I mean, this isn't, they're not trying to like lock this down from attack because why would anyone attack it? But, you know, I mean, if we're going to be building up this, uh, this parametric space, uh, sorry guys, but you know, that might, that might end up happening. Um, and it should be secure anyway. Um, and finally chain of custody for interpolated data sets is not well documented. So I mentioned that, you know, these interpolated sets have inputs, uh, and where do the inputs come from? Well, you know, let's, that, It'd be great to have more information about that. D weather. This is our answer. This is a this is a project that uh, we've been working on for a month or two or three or perhaps four. It's hard to keep track of time, frankly, these days uh, <laughs> on that scale. But um, this is our answer to weather data. So very succinctly, what it is is it's you know decentralized weather. So uh, take all the all the really good weather data and put it on IPFS. And uh, we have a client library that I just published to uh, PyPy last night uh, that can be downloaded and installed. And if we have time, I'll show that. Um, pip install dweather underscore client. And that's also on our GitHub. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, so I'll just kind of run through how this kind of solves those uh, those problems I, I, I showed in the previous slide. Um, so there's all this ingestion code uh, and that stuff standardizes things. So you can just say, give me Prism, give me Chirps, give me, uh, you know, NOAA CPC, whatever. And it'll, um, it'll return all of those in the same format and it will return them in data structures that make sense for your language. So in Python, this dweather library does uh, you know, dictionaries that we also, a lot of our data science team use um, uh, 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 NumPy pandas. So this data frame object, um, use an available and reliable hosting, uh, hosting infrastructure, I think that was supposed to be. So, you know, let's not have downtime. Let's not have really long waits. Um, let's also have a uniform API for accessing everything, right? Not, you know, a, a different endpoint for every data set. Track all data set revisions. So, you know, with Prism, with those six revisions, we just take every revision and we just have six different data sets and you can just get whichever one you want. And that makes it possible to balance timeliness with accuracy. So, you know, with our use case, it's like, if we're doing a Prism contract, we'll usually go with a payout at the 30 day revision. And that gives us, you know, a certain amount of accuracy and a certain amount of timeliness. Use an immutable data store, data is secure once posted. So this is a real IPFS thing here. Um, having, you know, uh, uh, weather data um, be addressed with the CID system uh, is a big deal because it, it, it really makes it much more feasible to, to do these, you know, automated payouts where you're just pulling a CID and, and that's it. There's no disputes, there's no nothing. It, it just kind of cuts out that, that link in the chain. Um, create a mechanism for tracking data, uh, input data sets. So this is kind of getting, actually this is past D weather. This is getting into uh, D climate, which is, uh, you heard it here first, that's gonna be a very ambitious project, which is gonna use IPFS as, a, as its backbone. Um, more on that later, that's another talk, I suppose. And make it open source. We want to bring the scientific community on board. We want to give grants to these entities to uh, to to incorporate this into their pipelines so they can post directly and and just everyone can have a great time. You know, I think uh, IPFS really is a great match for 
uh, these collaborative, like, you know, scientific and academic projects, because, you know, everyone is contributing. Um, and why, why shouldn't the hosting be, uh, be distributed as well? All right, so this is my info. Uh, we are hiring. Uh, if this is interesting to you, uh, shoot me a resume. Uh, if you want to come write IPFS code, if you want to do some, you know, uh, if you want to help me, help me manage this open source project, we have about 15 people right now uh, working at Arbol and, and we're rapidly expanding 